Jeff, can I, can I ask you a question? So, I mean, of course, I'm going to see through the lens of a pastor, but even just in a general sense, when I post something about Mr. Floyd, which I did, when I post I something that. about Ahmad, which I did, I am trying, I don't want to get emotional with it, but I am trying to use my platform or voice to help. Then it's almost without hesitation that I'm going to hear from, I don't want to even say the other side, but whatever that is, like Mike up, you don't understand the whole story. You don't, and they'll go into all these explanations. There's more to it. And here's the thing I love law enforcement. Even the guys I've talked to the last 24 hours, I love law enforcement. I wouldn't want to raise my kids in a world without law enforcement. I don't want to live in a world with no rules and boundaries and parameters. Mm -hmm. It'd be a free for all. Mm -hmm. How how do we speak out, not just social media, but life, how do we speak out with whether it's racial reconciliation or building a bridge or whatever? How, how do we speak out without then it coming across like we're anti law enforcement because even when I hear you say you're the most hated and you can't wait till you get out like that hurts my heart mm -hmm. you know what I mean like how how do we help without it being viewed as we're against yeah, that's a tough question to answer uh, I think there is so many people who look at things through what they perceive as the truth and so few people who are willing to look at the bigger picture there might be 90 of one and 10 of the other mm -hmm. the 90 percent have to sit back and open their hearts and open their minds just a little bit to listen to what the other 10 percent have to say what I feel is, keep doing it. The more you say, the more somebody's going to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And even if one person, only one person changes, yeah, yeah. then you've Absolutely. made, Absolutely. you've made that point. You've made a difference. Mm -hmm. Even if one, maybe that one will go to two other people mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, listen to me, ten minutes." Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll change somebody else's perspective. Yeah. Even if you get backlash. Even if you get hate mail, even if you get, hey, you're wrong, keep doing it. Yeah, I've, I've read your post, there is nothing derogatory in it. And this is, it, the fact is all this, anybody can say, you don't know everything, there's more to this story. Yes, there probably is more to the story. And no, we, nobody knows everything of what happened. What I do know, and again, my own opinion, what I do know is a white man, kneeled on a black man's neck for over eight minutes and did absolutely nothing. Never flinched, never moved. The other man that was standing there, his partner, never even turned around to tell him to get off. Those are facts. Right? Whether there's more to the story or not, whether it, doesn't it, matter. Know, it doesn't matter. Whether that guy was a criminal, whether he was a saint, whether he was, you know, a murderer or you know, he was jaywalker. It doesn't matter. He, the officer did what he did, and it was wrong, regardless. So it doesn't matter what the, the facts and the circumstances were. He's on his belly. He's handcuffed behind his back. He is clearly not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. There is zero excuse for what that officer did. Zero. We've seen with, like, um, George Floyd, I want to say it was Michael, Michael Brown, too, where you have all of these law enforcement officers who are present and are watching it, and they themselves, I, I, I want to know from your perspective, why, why do you think that a lot of these officers watch it go down in front of them and don't step up? Is, 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 there, a, is there an aspect of, um, well, this cop won't trust me? I don't know. My, the only thing I can think of is, one, you're right, they don't want to be like all. Mm. They want their partners to know that they can be trusted. And if they need help, they want to know that their partners are going to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. That is the only thing I can think of. Mm -hmm. You know, me personally, I, in good conscience, and because I'm a human being that loves mm -hmm. people, I couldn't stand back and watch. Mm -hmm. right. I just couldn't do it. Right. I, I would never be able to sleep. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. That's not what my 
family wants to see. That's not what my God wants to see. I I don't know why they would do. It. I I don't have a good answer. I just don't. I've seen it happen and I never understood mm -hmm. it. I want to think back. I want to get you guys' thoughts on this, especially yours, Cam. Because something happened this fall, back when the world was normal, and. Um, you guys were playing for a state championship, and Lucas was playing for a state championship. Yeah. There are not two districts in Richland County that are more different <laughs> in every way than Mansfield and Lucas. Yeah. Like, like, it can't. And I remember sitting with Kirk Conrad, who you probably know. Yeah, Kirk. I know Kirk. I love yeah. Kirk. Yeah. yeah. And, and we were sitting there and watching Chioki bus you guys to Lucas, and watching these kids from Lucas come to see you off to play. And I remember Kurt and I sitting there watching, particularly the video of you guys getting off the bus in Lucas. And I think one of us said, and I'll, I'll say it was me because I don't know, it could have been Kurt. I said, there's probably never been that many black kids in Lucas. <laughs> at one time. At one time. You know, and, and I, but that, that moment of seeing this togetherness that, that seemed to be genuinely happening with those kids. Can you talk to us about what that was like on the ground and like how that felt for you guys to be there seeing those, those athletes off and to have them come to your city? Because that all seemed like that happened very spontaneously. Yeah. Nobody yeah. knew that was happening. Yeah. You know, it just sort of did. Talk to us a little bit about like what that what that felt like to you as a person when that happened. They came to our send off like week thirteen when we were going to play some dusky. We like we had no clue. Like we were just like we went out there and then it was like you know Lucas is. Orange and black or orange and brown, so like we just blended in. As we start to look, we're like, we've never seen these kids before. Like we've never seen, like you know, we know all the parents, we know all the all the big fans. And I was like, who are they? I was like, Lucas. I'm like, Lucas. I was like, like Lucas here. Room. was like, Lucas here. Lucas here. I was like, oh. I was like, okay. Like you know, what am I? That's awesome. They want to support. I mean, and us going there, it's the exact same thing. And there didn't seem to be a problem, is because we were all. Like focused around one thing, it was football. You know, we were all there was all there was something in common with you know, or what other reason would Lucas be coming over to the senior high or we be going over there? It wasn't for some pigskin and twenty two guys hitting each other. Like that's all it is. And and I I um, answered some questions about this earlier when it happened. And like you know, it was like you know some like my neighbors or just people I ran into, and they're just like they're like. What are the odds, you know, that Lucas and Mansfield, you know, just like running into each other like that? You got it first, too. Right? It yeah, it was their first. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, it was just cool to see it happen, but it was all formed around just football. This common experience. And it's, it's, and it's, it's just so common. And like, and I remember saying one thing, I think I was talking to my mom because my mom graduated from Lucas. And my dad coached at Mansfield. And again, here I am. I'm <laughs> <to you. laughs> like everything I'm with both. So, and I was just like, it's just all around football. Like, there, there's no awkward interaction. That why? Because we're all like, there's all one thing. Like we're here for football. Like you know, and that's when we talk. I talk to the kids from Lucas. It's about football, about something. It's just like that's what it lays. That's like the grounds. And so, like, what if the grounds was changed up? Like, what if the grounds was just love? Like, what if we just based it off that and took that everywhere? Instead of just winning some football games, so yeah, just unify. I mean, what if like, what if they loved us the same way we love them, and just because, like, what? So what if, what if a Mansfield bus rolled into Lucas without, with no football season? Then what? Then what would you guys hear about that? Like, what? What would? What would that have been on the news journal? Like, or like, would someone have been called maybe? Or mm -hmm. and would we just? What if we just wanted to get on the bus and walk? We haven't been to Lucas. So none of us. <laughs> we were going to Lucas in 99.9, in in in, in except me. And Clay called up as a cousin and was like, where is Lucas? Where is that? Where is that? You know? So, like, 
So, like, I think you're asking is, like, what if you all had just decided that Lucas had a really great pizza restaurant? And, and we wanted to go, wanted and we, to go and we, wanted, to, and we wanted to park away, and we wanted to walk, and we wanted Would to... the experience have been different? Would I, yeah, and, like, I hate to say, I hate to say it, but, I, yes. Like, if, I mean, would, if, I, if I may. Yeah. Uh, if it weren't for the football, and it weren't for the, the mutual love of the game, and, yeah. you, and you guys, you know, come together for a common thing, how would you feel about going to Lucas and just you know, getting a pizza hanging out? You're answering that for me or like for, as a collective? For you. In for me? Yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, it was it, it is, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. I, I got a guy that I work with. Yeah. Very, very good friend of mine. Yeah. We come up on the department together. He's six foot six. Okay. He's about 360 pounds. Monster of a man. Black as black can be. I love the guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. He is amazing. He will not come see me in the valley. Mm. Oh. Okay. He said, "You will not catch me in the valley after dark." Mm. I'm like, Chris, why? I said, "Man, you are welcome in my home any day. Let's sit around the fire and drink some beer, man." He said, "Nope." He said, "When that sun starts going down, no. not a chance." I said, hey, "Look, I got a great fishing hole out of my parents' house." It's out in the country. Nobody don't bother you. I offered to take him fishing out of, out of our family farm, and you saw the expression go completely out of this man's face, and he said, "Absolutely not. That place terrifies me." I said, "Terrifies you, man? It, my parents, it's not, they'll put a chair up at the table for you." Yeah. He said, "Nope." He said, "It won't be five minutes, and I'll see people coming out of the woods with." White sheets and horses. Mm -hmm. He said, "No oh, wow. way." It's hard to. Where's he he Where he's from? He's from Mansfield. From Mansfield? Yeah. He's scared death. He will not come to hell. At all. He just he won't he won't do it. And again, there's that perception thing. Yeah, right? sad, sad to say, I understand. And you know, yo, he's. I don't agree. He's but a I huge guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd run from him. <laughs> You know, we went to defensive tactics one time. He tossed me across the room. No. <laughs> but he's he's such a nice fellow, just a very very nice guy, and I love him to pieces. But he is terrified of where I came from. Mm -hmm. And I think I think hearing him say that, it almost makes me revisit like when you said when I post that when I say that it's stuff hearing stuff like that. Like I love Richland County. But knowing there's people out there that's thinking, I would never come to your church. Like if you're not going to come fish, you're not coming to church. Mm -hmm. It's hearing stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. so frustrating to me. You'd be surprised at how many people say, they, I won't go to the south yes. of the county. Yeah. You won't catch me on those back roads because you'll never see me again. I've, I've never heard, heard people say that. Anything about the south and what you guys are talking about I've <laughs> never heard and I would go there to fish I would go there to fish I don't know why if the maybe I've just like blocked it out yeah, or, let me ask you how old are you? Uh, 18 you're 18 I'm 50 alright I've, I've got a, difference a, a couple days on you. yeah oh yeah <laughs> a little bit give give that another 30 years 30 maybe not even 30 years but as you grow older, you're going to see a lot more of what I'm talking about mm -hmm. just because of experience. Mm -hmm. Just as, as you get older, you're going to see things that just are not pleasant. Yeah. You're going to hear things that people talk about uh, us rednecks. That's what we are. Okay, I, I admit it. Again, four-wheel drive, flannel shirt, boots. Nobody understands. Nobody understands my way of life. You know, I'm very, very simple. Extremely simple, probably too simple. I hunt for my food. You know, it's what I've always done. They're scared of mm -hmm. going to the south of Richland County. Mm -hmm. I was scared to go to the north end of Richland County. Right. And so the discussion. <laughs> yeah. So you went. I, I did it anyways, yeah. and I stepped out of my comfort zone. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Because I was tired of seeing that space between us. And that's how you bridge the gap. That's how you bridge the gap. Mr. Buford, you've got a lot of years on all of us. Yes, <laughs> um, And so you've seen America get better and maybe arguably get worse. You know, the, the, the funny thing about that is 
when I was younger, and you know, and me and the fellas get to talking, you know, I said, well, maybe as this generation move off, the next generation, everybody be okay with each other. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. In some ways, the, this, some of the generation now, they picked up things from the parents and stuff, or grandparents or whoever, but, and so that thing would follow. Now, just like when I was a young boy, me and my sisters, it was, I had, it was 10 of us, but there were four of us, like, together, two boys and two girls. So they had some white friends, and they were young. Me and my brother had white friends. When they reach teenage, their parents said, no more. Mm -hmm. The boys used to come to our house, we used to go with their as kids now, they're the same age. And like I said, we seen it. You got to call her Miss. And we had to call this boy Mister. Mm. Same age. We're still young boys, you know. So we couldn't play with each other anymore. But sometimes we'd sneak around, you know, go please, you know, that nobody. And we still have fun together, you know. Okay, when we moved to Mansfield, Just I know that was you guys moved here? 59. 59, 59. Mid 59. And I had never went to school with like we see them because they would pass our school on the bus or we would pass, you know, depending. And uh, so we never went to school together. When I come here, it was a different experience. And I look at some of the black kids. <coughs> And they thought, now, you know, they were on top of the world. They would all go to their own group. They wouldn't mix. And, and, and speaking of the, uh, the sport thing, that was the only thing that ever brought any friendship or it seemed. Mm -hmm. You know, they got along good. They had each other back, but then when they got back in the city mm -hmm. at home, there was a separation. So what I'm saying is some things got better and some things stayed the same. And I believe some of the problem is, like I said, with conversations. They were asking the one that was with, you know, the white kid asked us, uh, I wonder why we can't play together anymore. <clears throat> now, you know, I couldn't answer that. His parents should have said something, even if it was a bad answer. Tell them their reason that we don't want you playing together anymore. You know? How old were you when that happened? I'm sorry. That was like, you know, 14, 14. you know, mm -hmm. okay. something like that. And 14 and that. And, wow. and so those things, the explanation wasn't given. I guess they didn't want to, you know, say to the kids, you yeah. know, the real reason. They just say you can't play together anymore. And then we had to speak to them. Like they were adults. I mean, you know, we we had, we were all taught respect for our elders. But hey, me and the kids running in the street, I'm gonna call you. Hey, Mister Jack, you know, <laughs> you know, you know that sort of thing. It hurt. You know, I mean, it, it really hurt. And and we were explained a reason why. You know, and as we got older, we went out with separate ways. You know, but. Like I said, some things seem to get better, but I didn't feel that when I came to Nashville. I said, now I'm in the world where, you know, everything's going to be. It wasn't like that at all. I went through high school with that same thing happening. Like I said, we were together, but separate, separate, you know, which didn't make sense to me. We go to the cafeteria, and each side, I guess, know where to go, because you never see any mingling with the group. You know, but we was in this better world now, supposedly. You know. How the last few weeks made you feel? I've seen things that's happening now that's, and like you go back to that social media, you see a lot of things now that were happening back then. But you just didn't see. You didn't, you know, so it wasn't as open as it is now. But I've seen things happen between policemen and blacks back then. 
you know, I mean, it's a terrible thing. I even had family members involved in threats from policemen, and for no reason. I mean, it really wasn't a, a reason, but, you know, and so you come to the point where you were afraid of that. So you see him come in and make sure you, because you had to cross over on the other side of the street. So it, it put in your mind, well, you know, these are the all powerful, so you were afraid of them. Whether they was going to do anything or not, you become afraid of them because of some of the things you, you know, experience. And so, I, and, 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 and even in Mansfield, you know, I ran into that. And, and then, you know, and I've always taught people, you know, try to, you know, you don't lump everybody in because of a few. You know, you got some bad acting black people. And it, like I said, it's them few that are looked at and seem like they get all the attention. Just like you got a few bad cops, they get all the attention, you know. The never broadcasts the good. It's just a few. But the, the few makes it bad for all. You know, I mean, you, you know, look at all of them with that same distaste. You know? What I'm saying is that this meeting right here tonight, hopefully, I can take something to somebody, you can take something, you know, and it, it'll grow.